Okay, so um, let's get started. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is the Pauli Yu, Master of Science in ESG and Sustainability in four section. So organized by Faculty of Business, School of Accounting and Finance. So first of all, uh, welcome all of you to join Pauli Yu for this info section. I think you have done your homework. Uh, in terms to know the Poly U, the history, the reputation, and the current uh, um, situation. So for me, uh, I'm Professor Wu from School of Accounting Finance. I will more focus on the um, faculty basis and the School of Accounting Finance. Okay. So our faculty basis, the core value is called the innovation, driving education, and scholarship with the 3D focus. The 3Ds are discovery, uh, design, and dis delivery. So that's the main core value for the uh, faculty of business. So as you might know, the uh, faculty of business is one of the largest business school in Asia and with over like 4,900 students. So we have alumni of over 55,000. Our faculty, uh, we have more than 170 faculties from all over the world. Uh, in addition to the large size of business school, also we are highly uh, reputable business school, ranked very high by all kinds of rankings. For example, the Times rank our business school as 27 in the world, okay? So in, in terms of business and uh, economics subject, the Shanghai ranking, global ranking of the management, we are ranked the number four globally, so which are very high. So which our school is a leading business school um, in, in, in the world. So um, also the business school is um, accredited by the ASCSB, which is a commonly uh, accepted accreditation internationally, and also the European uh, accreditation. So next, I'm going to more focus on the School of Accounting and Finance. School of Accounting and Finance is the oldest, uh, actually it's the oldest uh, school um, in Hong Kong. So we are, this year uh, is the first time we offer the Master of Science in ESG and the Sustainability. So uh, again, my name is Chang Wu. Uh, you can call me Professor Wu or call me Chang. I'm the, currently the program director for the new program. Today, I'm going to uh, talk about the, those topics, okay? So basically, I will introduce the program, and if you have any questions, feel free to uh, type in the chat box, or you can directly ask uh, me the questions, okay? Anytime you have questions, you can interrupt me. So um, the, the, the program actually is launched this year. It's the first time we offered the um, MS in the ESG and sustainability. The main motivation is driven by the market leads. We have the close relation with industry government. Uh, we receive a lot of the um, kind of the uh, call to open the program in ESG and sustainability, which is a leading uh, emerging area, which in Hong Kong lead a lot of tenants in this area. So in this year, uh, we offered the first uh, master program um, in Hong Kong. So this program is jointly uh, offered with the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. The main reason, as you might know, ESG is a interdisciplinary topic. So students not only need to know the business knowledge, but also know some uh, technical knowledge as well. So the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering will also help to offer some courses. So which I will explain later in the, uh, in the presentation. So the program basically, as I mentioned, is try to educate, try to train um, tenants who are interested uh, in ESG and sustainability and have the basis as well as technology knowledge in this area, try to meet the market needs for the demand of the ESG tenants in Hong Kong, mainly in China and around the world. So these are the program aims and objectives. I'm, not, I'm not going to read it. So um, 
So the, for the program details, there, uh, there are two basically options. So one is a full time, the second is part time. So basically we offer both modes, okay? So if you have a uh, dedicated time, you can choose a full time. So basically you need to um, elect at least the nine credits for each semester. Or you can, if you don't have a um, full time, you can do a part time. Uh, which is there um, you should take some courses maybe two courses per semester okay so which provide their flexibility actually for students who want to pursue a degree in this area or their diploma uh, the, the, the knowledge in this area so that's the basically there are a mixed mode uh, both a full time and a part time so the program basically uh, for the full time is a one year program and therefore their part time is two year program. Okay, so that's the basic structure of the program. So for program details, basically our class will be offered in the weekdays and the uh, and evening times. If you are four times, maybe some courses will be arranged uh, during evening times. For the uh, master program, you need to take the uh, satisfy thirty credits. Basically, each subject uh, is about three credits. So totally would be 30 credits, 10 courses, okay? So among the 10 courses, eight are core courses. Basically, they are mandatory. So you have to take those required courses. And the two are elective courses. You basically, you make the decision to choose two courses um, based on your needs and interest. So for those who cannot complete the, all the 30 credits, uh, you can also do the post diploma um, by taking seven core courses, 21 credits to, sub, to satisfy the um, diploma requirement. Okay, that's another option. Next, I'm going to talk about details program um, courses. Okay, so as I mentioned, there are eight subjects. Okay, so which are mandatory or the required courses, okay? The first one is AF5115, which is accounting course. So uh, we want you to have the knowledge of accounting, which is accounting for business and uh, analysis. The second course is principle of corporate finance. So also you need to know their finance knowledge, okay? So those two are like fundamental courses for business uh, subject students. Then beyond that, uh, other courses are more uh, subject based. So, for example, business risk management. So, help you to understand the world corporates, what are the major risks, as we know that the ESG related are also important risk factor, like environmental issue, climate change, those issues will be considered in modern business management. So, comprehensively, you need to understand the risk management for business. So AF5373 is a, one of the core courses for the uh, ESG program. Basically, it's ESG investment and green finance, which uh, we are going to teach you the, how to invest in ESG related to the portfolio and how to uh, in, invest and finance in the green finance. So that's uh, one of the core courses. So the 5510 is a corporate governance. And then the... Um, which covers a guidance component of ESG. So for ESG, G is basically it's guidance, right? So we need to, you to understand the proper guidance and the, what are the issues related to guidance, how to address those issues in the modern business. Then the F5634 is the uh, economics for sustainability, which is from economic perspective to understand the issues related to sustainability and economic solutions. So those courses are offered by the uh, School of Accounting and Finance. And then the last two required courses are offered by the um, environmental department. So the first one is sustainable development, environmental planning. The second one is global climate change and society response. As you can see, those two courses basically give you some uh, fundamental knowledge, technical knowledge to understand the environmental issues. For example, how to calculate the carbon emission, how to calculate the um, uh, neutrality issue. And the second of course is more targeted on the climate change issue, extreme weather or pollution 
and 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 then how the society responded to those climate change issues. Okay, those two are offered by environmental issue. So don't worry too much. Those two courses will not be uh, highly like uh, mathematical based. Basically, it's still very simple, like uh, simple basic technical uh, knowledge. Okay, not very advanced. Don't not worry if you are not have uh, solid knowledge in math. That's okay. No no problem. And beyond that, there are two uh, selective uh, elective courses, um, which the six credits. So you can choose from several courses, okay? So for example, if you want to have more knowledge in terms of quantitative analysis, like uh, business analytics skills, you can take the quantitative methods for finance. Basically, uh, we will teach you how to do the business analytics, okay? How to analyze, quantitative analyze uh, different issues related to finance also the ESG, okay? Second is, if you are interested in the uh, energy market, you can take the economics of what economic uh, energy market. The third part, the third one is project-based. Basically, it's like a capstone project. Basically, you will work with a professor to work on certain um, uh, project, okay? Project could be the case study, could be some the real world question, could be some research project. So we will um, try to link you with some like uh, industries, okay? Uh, we have some uh, uh, relations with some uh, like big four or some like uh, government, they have some issues, projects. We will work with you on the capstone projects, okay? On the ESG related topic. So the next two courses are offered by the uh, CWAR department environmental impact assessment, environmental management system and audit. So those are more quantitative, mathematical, technical related courses. If you want to have more knowledge in that area. So the other three, so we building carbon footprint assessment is more carbon neutrality related course, how to understand the carbon neutrality footprint and how to make assessment. Okay, those are uh, more technical related issue. And then the, another interesting pair, uh, course is a transformation to sustainable smart city, which is uh, offered by our marketing department, marketing management department. That course is more uh, have a better understanding of the smart city, how to make the city more sustainable. So lastly is the uh, management uh, course offered by marketing uh, and management department, which is ethics, responsibility, and sustainability. This is more related to the CSR, social responsibility, sustainability, and ethical issues. If you have a bit, want to have a better understanding of CSR related issues. So you can choose two of them, okay, two of them. So in terms of course uh, offering structure, basically if you are full time, so basically in the first year, uh, you have no option. You have to take the all five required courses. In the second semester, you will take three um, required courses and then two elective courses. That's for the full time. And then for the part time, it basically is two years, right? Two years. You can uh, take the in year one, the first semester, two required courses, semester two, two required courses, and one elective. And in year two, you can uh, take three required courses. And the second semester, one required courses, one elective. That's a structure for the part-time mode. Okay, normally two years. Also, we accept the credit transfer. If you have already have previously have a postgraduate uh, degree in a postgraduate, so you can transfer some credits uh, to the um, program which have similar courses. Okay, so which will be approved need to be approved by the school. But typically it should be uh, on your degree eight years from the year of uh, your graduation, okay? So that's the credit transfer issue. Next, I'm gonna talk about an entry requirement. Basically you need to uh, have a bachelor degree from a recognized university. Uh, that's a like, hard requirement, right? The second is that the, um, so we prefer if you have some working experience, but this is not required. Okay, it's not uh, mandatory. Uh, we prefer, but it's not uh, mandatory. So if you don't have 
working experience, that's okay. Okay, we still consider your application. So for because our course are taught in, it, it is an English program, so I taught in English, so you need to satisfy English qualification. So for the non-native speakers of English, right, you have to have the um, take the some uh, uh, the, the English test, right, TOEFL or, or IE or TS. There are minimal requirements of school, right? So you know that this is listed on the university or the our school website. But there are some ways if you have like a native speakers or you have a degree, uh, bachelor degree in English, you don't need to take the uh, English qualification visa. So the, for the tuition fee for the next, for the, this year, the tuition fee is a Hong Kong dollar, three, uh, 309,000 per program for the 30 credits. That's the, uh, I think is similar to other programs. So for the, um, um, as I said, I'm the um, director for this program. Um, this list of my telephone and email. And also we have the administration supporters. Um, we have Miss Sharon Wong and uh, her telephone and email. So if you have any questions, you can reach us. So that's basically the um, application deadline is April 30th, okay, so for this year. So basically, this is all the information I'm going to share with you. Uh, pretty straightforward. So next, I will open the floor. If you have any questions, feel free to open your camera and uh, Mac to talk to me. Or if you prefer, uh, prefer the chat box, you can type in the chat box as well. So feel free to ask any questions. Any questions? Don't be shy. So any question if you want to ask. Okay, here's a question for uh, for part time. How we how can we pay the tuition fee? So um Sharon, can you answer the question? Hello. The tuition yes. fee should be paid by credits. So if you register two subjects, that means it's uh, six credit, and then you have to pay for the six credit. Okay, good. Thank you. The second question is, is there an interview now for applications? When will the interview be sent to the uh, sent to app, thanks. Okay, so um, as you know, the, um, our spring semester will begin next week. So we will start our review and the, uh, in, sorry, next week we will start our interview process, okay? So the, there is an interview, M interview is mandatory. We will select the uh, candidates and then conduct interview starting next week. So maybe last for several weeks, not one week, we will continue interviewing. As you know, the deadline is April 30. So the, um, so the, um, so the interview will rolling best. So what about the class size? Uh, we don't know exactly right now the class size. Um, um, I think that the school have the requirement for class size. Sharon, am I right? Is that 50 uh, maximum or? Uh, yes, uh, for the class size, we have around 50 to 60 in one class. Mm. That's a, yeah, that's a maximum. If more than that, we were separate in different sessions, okay. Excuse me? So the next question from um, Google, the iPhone. Okay, will the future placement be a relative good situation for the graduate of this program? So that's the reason we open this program is that because of a lot of demand 
as you might know, right? You have done the research. So right now the ESG and the sustainability and the carbon neutrality has been a very, very hot issue. And the, uh, not only Hong Kong, but many in China and internationally, every country, almost every country, they have set up their, their target. They try to find tenants to help them to solve the, um, especially environmental and carbon issue. So, um, and also for the um, government and the corporations, they set up requirement for disclosure, for investment, and for the management of the firm. So that's we uh, heard a lot of the demand from the corporations, from the professional accounting firms, from the investment bank and from the corporations. That's why we uh, answer the call from the market to open this program. In addition to that, um, at our Hong Kong Poly U School of Accounting Finance, we have a special center, which is called CSEP Center. The CSEP Center is basically is target on the ESG issue. So which provide that we have their kind of the industry connections. So basically we uh, all organize all kinds of industrial speaker, connect the students with the industry leaders. Okay. So also we have some uh, collaborations with their accounting firms and some investment banks. So those are the potential opportunities. As you also know, uh, the new the new government, the Hong Kong new government set up their uh, ambitious plan for try to attract more tenants to Hong Kong. One of the tenants they want specifically this specify in their white paper is the ESG related tenants. Okay, so I'm positive okay, on this the market demand for this program. So next uh, question from Niu Suwen. I applied ASG program on December 29. When will I get the interview? So December 29 is basically it's a holiday, it's New Year. So I think that uh, uh, we, we, we just started the, uh, screening the candidates and we will invite interview starting Next, uh, next week or week after next week, we will schedule like weekly by weekly on their, uh, on their interviews, okay? Did I answer your question, Niu Su Wen? Okay, so next is from um, GPB for everyone. Do I lead a GMAT result for their apply for this program? So, uh, my understanding is not, right? Sharon, am I right? Uh, yes, we did not require for GMAT results. So uh, this is not, uh, uh, you can add- GMAT is not required, GMAT. right? Yes. Okay. So next question, is there a written test? Um, I don't think there are like a formal written test, but during interview, we might ask you some uh, questions and maybe ask you write a couple of paragraphs. So, but there's no formal written text for the program. Next question from Ning, um, any age limit for this course? Of course, no age limit. There's no any age limit. As we said, we prefer uh, students with experience, okay? So that would be great. Uh, but it's not required. There's no any age limit for the program. Next one from Thailand. What about the number of candidates in tech for this year? So uh, we, uh, I think that the, our, um, this is the first time we offer this program. Also, this is the first program offered in Hong Kong. So I think that uh, we, don't want it to be very large, but also don't want it to be very small, right? So I think we were target on um, between 50 to 100. Could it be 50 to 100? That's our target uh, of the uh, uh, admitted students. Next question, I'm majoring in management now, but I'm very interested in you. Uh, of course, uh, if you are majoring, majoring in management, you are very welcome to, um, to uh, join the ESG program. I think that is, as I mentioned, the ESG is not a purely one subject, okay? It's kind of interdisciplinary topic. 
you also need the management knowledge, right? As I mentioned, some courses are offered by management, but also you need to uh, need to know accounting finance, as well as some economics and also some technical understanding of environmental or the social or the governance issues as well. I think perfect to match the program, okay? Next one is Jing Jing Niu, right? I just completed my CFA ESG course. Does this overlap well with the curriculum? Uh, I don't, um, I think there are some overlappings, okay? There are also some overlappings between the uh, curriculum. As you can see, I expand the courses, right? 10 courses. Um, the core courses are, uh, our, our program try to map the um, some ESG requirement for the profession. Okay, we cover all basically from accounting, finance, economics, technical skills, and some uh, other uh, um, hands-on experience in terms of the capstone. Okay, so we'll be all co covered, similar coverage of the CFA. CFA, but it's like a master program, you need to have more deep understanding and knowledge in this area. Next question from from WK. I work as environment officer in the construction industry. Why some information to uh, the PIEC report? Yes, uh, uh, yes, yeah, of course. Your uh, any working experience will be count as working experience related. Uh, your your working experience is perfect to match with the program requirement, right? So I think that the um, <clears throat> construction industry is a uh, very important environmental issue is a big concern. And also that um, there are more requirements for ESG disclosure requirement. So we will be um, uh, uh, cover that in, in, in the program as well. Yes. How do you uh, prioritize the selection of candidates? Okay. For the candidates, I think that, uh, uh, of course, that's like a general, uh, similar to other programs, right? We look at a comprehensive, look at your, uh, for example, your graduation university, the GPA program, or your, ma your major, and your, do you have any rewards, or, or your GIE or English skills, and the interview performance. And uh, many other di uh, different uh, order, all, all kind of indicators we will comprehensively consider the candidates. Okay, there is no like uh, one to the norm for the selection of candidates. Can final year students apply? Yes, uh, if you can uh, get your uh, degree before the uh, before the before you join us, I think it's totally qualified. Am I right, uh, Sharon? For the final year students? Uh, yes, we will give them with a conditional offer. When they receive the award parchment, they can upload it and meet the condition. Okay. Uh, next question, uh, Tom. Uh, for the number of the candidates intake for this year, how many to local, how many to non local? We don't have the, we do not have the distribution between local and non local. So as we said that we will comprehensively look at the students' background and the selected students. There is no certain rule or certain like a uh, target number of local or non-local. Okay, we open to all candidates. Uh, let's look at next question. Uh, Good afternoon. I submit a personal statement to others where the teachers read it. So um, I don't understand the question uh, clearly. So Sharon, what do you understand the uh, Jinqing's question? Uh, yes, uh, if you submit the um, personal statement into the others column in the e admission system, we will still uh, you know, download all of the uh, application materials to pass for our program management team to for their review. So yes. Okay, so answer is yes, thank you. I think the next question is also, I think the reference letter is must required, right? It's must, you must have submit reference letter. It's required, my understanding.
So next question, uh, Roger, um, Rogers, Ziyang, Wu. So I think that they're a very good question. Uh, I think you're concerned about the um, job opportunity of this program. Uh, so as I mentioned that uh, uh, based on my understanding um, and uh, from the industry, especially from the government, the Hong Kong government are really in need of the ESG tenants. There's, if you look at the Hong Kong government, the like, uh, so white paper, they specifically mentioned that ESG tenants is one of the top priorities, like uh, um, leaded area for the for the um, for the Hong Kong for Hong Kong, Hong Kong. So if you have the degree in this area, I think it's really attractive. That, that's my understanding. Okay. So uh, New Suwen. I'm in the final year of bachelor. If I have no relevant work experience, but to consider, as I mentioned, that if you have working experience, will be passed. But if you don't, it's okay. Uh, it's not. Uh, um, it's we will not paralyze you if you don't have the uh, working experience. We will also consider all the students, including fresh graduate students. Okay, no problem. So next question, how many applicants have you received? I, I don't think we, uh, I can, I don't know exactly, but I don't think this is an appropriate question I can answer. I'm not sure, Sharon, can I answer this question or can you, or should we shouldn't? Uh, sorry, we cannot disclose the application numbers to the applicants, so sorry. Yeah. That's my understanding. I, I think we are, it's not appropriate question uh, for ask the how many applicants, okay? So the next one is I obtained a Bachelor of Science uh, in Environmental with second lower degree where you can see that as I said that at this point, we don't have the clear like a, a cutoff or benchmark for, the, for consider the candidates. Of course, you are welcome to apply. So uh, we will comprehens comprehensively consider your profile. So the grade is just one aspect, one indicator, okay? So next, uh, uh, Alice, uh, I haven't any relevant experience and degree background in ESG will be negative. I, as I said that, uh, if you are in, I think, uh, um, as I mentioned, there's, couple of times, I don't think that the um, working experience is a requirement, okay? It's not mandatory, okay? If you don't have working experience, you are welcome to apply the program. If you are really interested in this program and then interested in this subject, I think that uh, that's more important. Um, that's very important for us to consider. So again, the working experience is not required, okay? So how about accept, acceptance rate? Thanks. So acceptance, I, I think uh, I think that the, we will, uh, this is like this number, I don't think uh, uh, I can discuss, discuss right now to you, but we will select uh, um, candidates for interview you based on, on the total number of applicants and how many we're going to admit, okay? Based on the past experience or the other benchmarks. So uh, I don't know exactly what's the acceptance rate. Because again, this is the first time for offer this program. For this particular program, we don't know the accept acceptance rate. We have no uh, historical data. And uh, <clears throat> any other questions? Yeah, if you feel comfortable, you can open your camera and directly talk to me. You're welcome. No worries. Okay, so next question from Ming Yi Shuan. Self statement of letter of recognition necessary. Uh, if I did not submit it, well, probably before can I submit it back? So, I, uh, Sharon, you might help answer this question. Uh, for the reference letter and the personal statement is not uh, required by our program, but if you need 
you want to submit it as a supplementary document, you can submit it uh, into the others column. But uh, the others column can only upload one PDF file. So you can you need to combine all the supplementary document into one file to upload. Uh, good, thank you. Yeah. Uh, what what's the quota for the two thousand twenty three intake? As I as I, I I I already mentioned that right. So we we targeted between fifty to one hundred between fifty and one hundred. We don't know. If, depends on the profile. Depends on the pool of the candidates. Okay. So may I ask what kind of questions will interviewer ask? Uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> That's a good question. So uh, we haven't started the interview uh, yet, but uh, my understanding when you prepare interview, so that's some some typical and uh, general question, right? You expect like uh, why you are interested for this program. So how you want to uh, uh, commit it to program or how you spend, it, what's your plan for the graduation? What are you going to achieve or, um, Kind of, we try to try, we try to pick out your motivation and whether you are committed, whether you work hard, and what kind of we have, whether you have ambition to be successful for the program, right? So that's pretty much like the general questions. I don't think that we will ask many technical questions because uh, I think this is a new program. It's not like one specific uh, subject, so it's more general questions. But I don't know exactly the question, okay? So that's just my guess. So next there would be uh, when the interview will take place. I think that the interview will conduct it online, right? It's online interview. So we will invite you for the Zoom meeting, right? Zoom meeting. Uh, we will start the interview uh, uh, maybe next week or the week after next week. That's the starting week, okay? If you don't receive interview, don't be uh, take it as lecture. We may arrange your interview later, okay? So. Um, it takes time because we don't have uh, many faculty to help you. We, we have to schedule a certain number of interviews each week. So we try to interview as early as possible, but maybe your interview will be arranged um, uh, later. Okay, don't be take it as elective. Okay. Other questions? So there are many good questions. Okay, so I think that is almost the end of the info section. So we, I can take uh, maybe one more question. Uh, if anyone have one more question, uh, so we can, I can answer the last question. I will count five uh, and see any questions, okay? Five, uh, four, three, two, one, okay, no more question. Oh, there's one more question. Okay, this is last question. When will be the offer be announced after interview? So that's a good question. Uh, Sharon, can you help answer that question? Uh, the offer will be announced after within two weeks after the interview. Okay, thank you. That's good. Uh, good answer, okay. So after interview, you expect the uh, offer around two weeks, okay? Thank you, Sharon. Thank, thank you all for joining our info section. Very glad to meet you all. So hopefully uh, we'll see you uh, in Hong Kong and at PolyU. So good luck and uh, um, have a nice day. <laughs>